Amy and I both grew up on ranches. Uh, we got married right out of high school. Uh, owned a business within uh, a year of that. Uh, I was working full-time construction and, and uh, she was uh, busy taking care of the uh, general store, the Stoneville store. We are in Union Center, South Dakota. Uh, it's about uh, 50 miles uh, east of the Black Hills. We're definitely out in cow country. We have four sons and 10 grandkids. The ranch where we live now came up for sale in, uh, in 1984 and we uh, purchased it. We'd already had a business here, the Quebec Ranch Supply, Farm and Ranch Supply business. And uh, the uh, gentleman that owned this ranch uh, came to me one day and said, you need to own this place. And I couldn't agree more. And so uh, we purchased it in 84 and then uh, since then we've uh, We've added on to the ranch, I think, uh, six or seven times. I currently serve in the, in the South Dakota Legislature in the Senate, and I chair the Agricultural Committee. And uh, people ask me, why did I get involved? Uh, I started out as a county commissioner and uh, moved on to, uh, served in the House of Representatives, and then I've served uh, several terms in the, in the Senate. I've always been involved in the Ag Committee. To have people that are producers and have a good understanding of, of the workings of, of agriculture, have a good understanding of conservation efforts and that the, the say the cost share money that ranches get or farms get for their efforts, it's an effort that's going to benefit every single citizen of South Dakota and it's going to benefit every citizen of the U.S. in one way or another eventually. We always thought that we would like to have a, a cabin in the Black Hills or in the woods or something like that and not having the faith to think that I might be willing to forego an opportunity and, and do that sort of thing. I thought we better start planting our own forest right now and we did that uh, the first of them 30 years ago and we have a we have a forest. I grew up planting the trees you know the one place we call the forest uh, I planted that when I was in the eighth grade helped put the uh, drip irrigation to get those trees going well and now I get to walk through them and you know you have 28 30 foot towering pine tree, so it's been fun to see the transition, the benefit for the wildlife. Um, and, you know, it's just beautiful to see something green in the dead of winter when it's white and, and the wind's blowing across the prairie. We've planted 30,000 trees, and uh, 100 years from now, the only thing that the evidence of Amy and I being here is going to be the, the kids and the trees and the wildlife, the guests. The guests would be deer and bobcats and coyotes and fox and skunks and coons and big mule deer and whitetail and antelope and uh, the hundred different species of birds that most folks never see. The two biggest things we've done are adding the water systems to get uh, water out into more remote parts of the range so we can get more even uh, grazing and better utilization out of the range that we have and also the rotational grazing systems especially the one where we we took 1800 acres chopped it into 13 uh, different paddocks and we do a once through rotation the, the bigger pastures will get 10 days the small pastures will get five to seven days and we've been able to increase the carrying capacity on that particular piece of range by almost 100%. And we're growing more grass with a better uh, diversity of range species than that was there before. So that's been pretty awesome to see that transition. The plant population is greater than it was before. The cattle do better. You know, it's not hard to implement the system. The fencing, the fencing is, is definitely an input cost, but moving cattle is a very simple process. We'll go out there, they're ready to move. We open the gates, come through, close the gates, get good harvest efficiency, and that plant species is grazed at a different time every year, so you're not grazing 
those early season grasses hard every year, that particular paddock will have about 400 days of rest every single year. And it'll only have cattle on it for five to 10 days. So that's been an interesting experiment and it's going very, very well. Whenever we can, we take the bale processor and feed over the top of areas that are scarred by cattle trails or erosion, that sort of thing. And, and uh, what we found is that it heals those areas. It cuts the, the healing time by 80 or 90 percent. Unbelievable. So it really does well that way. And the other thing we've done recently is we've just set a complete round bale in an area where we might have a monoculture of grass that isn't the most desirable. Uh, prairie sand reed is a fine grass, but there's a lot of times of the year that the cattle won't eat it. So if we set a bale of that in the middle and, and change the, the nutrient profile of the soil, then all of a sudden you have some western and some things starting to come through that. So. The reason this food security and water quality is available for us to enjoy every day and air quality is because of what farmers and ranchers are doing uh, when it comes to conservation efforts and, and caring about the land and making sure that everything is better today than it was yesterday and better this month than it was last month and better this year than last year.